go. Resume recording. Cool. So that should be recording. Excellent. So yeah, the, the reason I decided to go with this was because the one presentation that I just did recently was talking about how to get fast and free results on Facebook, which obviously everyone wants to know. Um, and that's obviously understanding the full capabilities of the platform. However, the one that I've been doing about a couple of weeks back was how to create an offer that sells on Facebook because it doesn't matter even if you know how to use the platform, if you don't have the right offer, it's not going to sell. Um, so there's kind of two aspects. So this morning um, they had a baby and this is the baby that they had, <laughs> which was specifically put together for you. Um, <laughs> so how to get fast and free results, but also how to create an offer that sells on Facebook. So firstly, just a little bit about myself, because I know here yeah, Brooklyn knows me, but um, I'm Chantelle Girardi, a qualified and award-winning Facebook strategist. Um, it wasn't always that way. I was initially self-taught out of pure desperation. Uh, in 2008, knowing no one, I moved from, uh, to the Gold Coast from Durban, South Africa, so hence the mixed accent. And I had twin four-year-olds and a one-year-old at the time. Um, and at that point, my husband was at, uh, here on a working visa, so he was the one that was working. However, he was made redundant twice in probably the first three years. Um, so with no marketing budget, no startup capital, I basically had to teach myself Facebook to get clients, create opportunities and grow my business. Uh, and in the saturated industry, because a lot of people go, oh, you know, um, yeah, the industry is not saturated. Well, my industry was, uh, which was the personal training industry, the health, wellness and fitness industry, um, which I'm sure all of you guys can resonate with. Um, but five years later, uh, yeah, so after doing that, five years later, my PT business was doing so well, I actually opened up a health, wellness and fitness center on the Gold Coast. Um, and everyone was quite surprised by that because I did not know anybody here on the Gold Coast at all. And yet I was able to do that in the first five years. Um, now, in a perfect world, in my head, I thought that I would just hire out the therapy rooms in my wellness center and that all the subcontractors would just pay me and we'd all live happily ever after and we could all refer to each other. However, they often struggle to pay me rent because they struggled getting clients. Um, so I started to run a weekly meetup group to support them, uh, which was called Health, Wellness and Fitness Entrepreneurs. Um, but whenever I couldn't get a speaker, I used to talk about how uh, Facebook and free Facebook opened up all these opportunities for me. So I ran those meetings for quite a while and after six and a half years of doing both the businesses, I finally walked away from the gym industry last year uh, to focus more on the struggling business owners who are overwhelmed with using Facebook in their business. So I've now helped over 300 business owners worldwide learn how to use Facebook safely and effectively. So safety is super important for me, um, massively important. And effectively is basically so that we don't waste our time and our money. Um, and that we can create income and scale our business faster. And I'm talking about not spending a cent on advertising. Wow. Which is super cool. <laughs> <laughs> super cool. So these are the did you knows that I put together just because some people go, why Facebook? Okay, so 93% of small businesses prefer Facebook because it's more fun, entertaining and engaging, uh, which is cool. 67% of marketers find Facebook to be their most important social media channel. So it's not me just saying it. It's not just small businesses preferring it. Marketers, 67% of them find Facebook to be the most important channel. 43% uh, of B2B marketers also name Facebook as their most important advertising channel, passing LinkedIn. So a lot of people say, oh, I need to spend more time on LinkedIn. But this over here shows you that Facebook is highly effective even in B2B. B2B. There are 2.8 billion monthly active users on Facebook. That's actually gone up now, I'm sure. Um, there are over 60 million active business pages. Only 6 million actually do paid advertising. So that's another 54 million are not doing paid advertising. The average click-through rate is only 0.9%, meaning that <laughs> if you are putting money on advertising, uh, you, it's only 0.9%, the less than a percent of people actually clicking through to ads. Uh, so people access Facebook about eight times a day. So I always ask everyone to consider how many times a day they actually log, uh, click into Facebook and check it. 51% um, of millennials cannot go five hours without checking Facebook. So 
I'm wondering if that's you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's just to handle that. There are younger, there is a younger demographic that are getting onto Facebook. Facebook users make 2 billion searches every month. Now that's super important because people aren't just scrolling and keeping, uh, you know, they're not just being social on Facebook, they're actually searching. Okay, 2 billion searches every single month. So that means they're looking for things. 500 million Facebook users are using the platform to watch videos every day. So that there is just showing you how important uh, using video or having a video marketing strategy for your business can be as well. Uh, but one of the biggest things to take note of is Facebook use is up by 70% at the moment because of everyone being at home. So the good news is, is that there are more people on Facebook searching, looking, engaging. Uh, the bad news is, is that there are more people on Facebook advertising, marketing, and trying to sell their wares. So I always say the person who does it best gets the client. Okay, so this is Facebook world. Okay, so just so we can understand the absolute full capabilities of this platform. All right, you start with your personal profile and you're only allowed one and it is attached to one email address. And it is private unless you make it public. You're allowed 5,000 friends, so you're only limited to 5,000. There's a section for your bio. So consider when you've set up your personal profile, have you done all these things? And you may wish to take a screenshot when this is all up as well, just to check that you actually have gone and made, made full use of all these things. Your contact details, and again, you can decide what's gonna be private or public or only visible to your friends. Your business details can be in there and you cannot believe how many people have not updated their business de details on their personal profile. All your digital links, making sure that they work, that they're, they're clickable. Uh, featured photos, so they're the first uh, one to nine photos that come up on a mobile phone. Your relationship status, your location, which is super important for the algorithm. Family members, this is one I don't particularly like, so I encourage people not to have their family members listed on their private profile, just in case somebody does troll you. Life events, which is really cool, because it kind of keeps a collection of all the achievements, or, or if you've been in the newspaper, been in an event, if you say that to life events, it becomes a wonderful catalog of um, all the important things that you've done. You can check in on your uh, personal profile as well. However, please do not check in at your home because that's a direct uh, link to where you live. You can run events, but they're private and only uh, available to your friends list. The privacy settings are private unless you make them public and Zuckerberg has been, uh, in the last year or two, they've really tightened up on that one, which is really cool. You can tag people as well and determine how those tag settings work. You can message people privately there's Facebook stories. So because Facebook tried to buy Snapchat, Snapchat said no. Uh, and Facebook said, well, we're gonna create our own because we're trying to get a younger demographic across to Facebook. So Facebook created Facebook story, which is a mithril content, meaning that it's, it's, a, it's your words and pictures go up to the story and it becomes a video to watch as opposed to scroll through and read and it disappears in 24 hours. So some people prefer to use that feature rather than scroll through. Um, profile preferences, so you can decide again what you see or don't see or what everyone sees. You can have a favorite quote. Details about you, which is a great opportunity for you to talk about who you are uh, and what you do. You can have your birthday. You can even hide your, um, your birth year now. Now on the right hand side here, you can see we've got our business page. Now our business pages are public, 100% public. You can ban people from your page, you can block them from your business page uh, in settings, but business pages are public. Now the people on there that join are called your fans. So they're not your friends, they're your fans. And you can have unlimited amount of them. There's also a section for reviews. Um, and now it's a new thing, you can actually turn that on or off. Um, and there's pros and cons to that because obviously people like to buy from seeing your reviews as well. However, if you're being trolled, it might be a good idea for you to turn those reviews off so that people can't leave a negative message. Yeah, ask a question, go for it. 
Oh, I was just going to say um, in health in Australia, most of the time can't have reviews depending on, um, you know, whether or not you're a practitioner with APRA. So I just wanted to let anybody who's watching this um, know just to be mindful about whether or not you're legally allowed to have your reviews turned on. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Uh, there's a click to contact button as well. Um, so you can see this is one of the reasons why you don't want to set up your business as a personal profile because you're so limited by what you can do. A click to contact button is amazing because that there's a way that people can directly then message you or go to your landing page or book a call with you. Uh, physical address. So unless it's your work address, I wouldn't put it in. I don't ever put your home address on Facebook. Page story, which is the same as Facebook story. However, it's on your page. We find that the personal Facebook story works well. Not many, not too many people go in and check the page story. Uh, it's governed by a response rate. So kind of like Google, the slower you are to respond, the less active or reliable you are seen to be. So those who respond uh, in a good time will actually come up higher in the search. There's three search categories and the first one's the most important. So whenever, whenever you go in and you choose your categories, that first one is the, is the most important because that's the one that you see when people are searching for you, that very first one. So you want to get that order right. The second, then there's a second one and a third one. We've noticed that Facebook sometimes have been taking away that third category and I will warn you, they, they're not nice ones that you can choose. <laughs> they're not. Everyone always has difficulty finding the ones that they want. Now there's a story section. Now it's called story and it's in the about section on your Facebook page. It's actually down on the on a desktop. If you go into your about section, it's on your right hand side. That is the space for you to include a landscape type image with a, you know, they call it story. And that's what Facebook's about. They're about stories. So I encourage you to write three to five sentences about you, the person, then three to five sentences about why you do what it is that you do, then three to five sentences of the problem that you solve for people. And that would be a great way for you to work out what that story is. And now you can take that story and also put it in the details about you on your personal profile. Uh, you can set up events, uh, just noting that if you set up an event on Facebook, it does nothing unless you go and take that event and work that event. So there is a strategy with regards to that as well. Uh, services and or shop, and you can actually have both now. Uh, and you can actually link them to e-commerce stores and to your website too. So services, shop or both. There's an offers section, so you can create an offer. Uh, bearing in mind, Facebook is a business, so they are going to keep asking you to pay, but you don't have to pay. You can just leave it there. There's a community feature, meaning that if somebody tags your comments on you, it becomes a catalogue of your online presence on Facebook. And that, that's quite, quite good because uh, that gives you social proof. Links to your groups. And again, just remembering that you don't want to be sending people to somewhere if it doesn't go anywhere. You want to make sure that if you are sending people somewhere that there's, a, there's intention or a strategy behind that. People can inbox you. So it's very different because there's messages which are personally, but on your page, it's an inbox and that's governed by that response rate. So you want to make sure you go in and check it. Now there's a messaging response or an auto response feature as well. So you don't need a messenger bot. You can go in there and actually set up your own, um, you can actually go in there and set up your own um, auto response. So for example, if you're a mechanic and you don't check Facebook, you only check Facebook like once a day in the evening, you can let people know in that auto response, hey, your call's important. Please could you contact our reception now as we only, ch we only check Facebook once, once a week. So we just handle any objections that, that there would be in there. Uh, page roles and administration. So you can actually give people rights to run your page. However, I do encourage you to have a social media responsibilities agreement in place. So if someone has access to your page, there's clear guidelines as to what they are allowed to do and not allowed to do. Because if we've had massive chunks of pages that have been taken out, lost or deleted uh, because of miscommunication, or people not fully understanding how to use it. And if you have given admin rights to someone and, they, and you've finished with their services, go into your page settings, go to page roles and remove them because we have had some pages that have been hold hostage. 
paid ads and boosts, obviously, so don't boost. It just it doesn't work, especially in the service industry. Uh, you can tag people. Uh, there's also a jobs category as well, so you can get job applications through there. And it has its own scheduling tool. So a lot of people want to go and get outside schedulers. But as soon as you take uh, use outside schedulers, Facebook kind of gives you like a little spank and kind of slows the algorithm down because they prefer everything to stay within Facebook. So it has its own scheduling tool. It's now found in the tab along the top. It's under publishing tools. Uh, you can schedule lives there as well, which is really cool. So then you can have groups. Now groups, you can set them up. They can be public, closed or secret. So people in the group are called members. It has its own description, which I encourage everybody to read when they go into a group. And if you have a group, make sure that you've set up that description. There's also rules and etiquette, which are get governed by the administrator. So you wanna make sure that you know who the admin is and you understand the intention of the group um, and you, got, you follow those rules and guidelines. There are categories as well that you can choose for them. There are admin or multiple admins you can have in the group. You can run events within the group. You can even include files and units, meaning that if you've got a program, you can actually upload your files or your units and take people through a course. You can schedule in there as well, and you can direct message people through there. And I encourage people to tag them. So if you're having a conversation with somebody within a group, always at them. So whenever I say to anybody, if you've got a question for me, at me, because I might miss that. I might miss the notification. And there's top fan badges now, which is really cool. And that way, um, I, I, some of you may have seen this morning, I was posting a, um, a way that people can optimize or use that function. Um, top fan badges is a great way for you to recognize the people who are actively engaged in your page. Um, if you just ignore them, you can either ignore them and nothing will happen, or you can actually reward them by saying thank you and tagging them or asking them to, um, you know, for feedback on your page or would they like to, you know, maybe give them a discount for that week or, but those are your cheerleaders. So we want to make sure that we look after them. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so about, I put that slide together probably about a year ago. And since then, there's been a whole lot more for Facebook because they want to take over the world. So Facebook's also got watch parties. So when people started uh, slowing down at watching Facebook Live, they decided to start watch parties, meaning that you can do a Facebook Live and then at a later time, you can create a watch party in other groups, on your page, uh, on your personal profile, and you can, and throughout the year, throughout whenever, you could just go and reuse that video and create a watch party and tag people to get them to engage. Um, so that, that one's a pretty cool one. Uh, Facebook Stories. So I spoke about that earlier. However, there's a new feature now where um, Facebook Stories are now going to be available for three days as opposed to 24 hours. So that's a new feature that Facebook's testing out. Um, then there's Workplace. So Workplace is a communication tool that connects everyone in the company. So if you're a business owner and there's other people in it, you can create a workplace and you can all communicate, talk, engage, uh, remotely in that space, which is really cool. And it's got uh, groups, chats, video calls, live board co casting. There's Marketplace, which obviously is like kind of like eBay or Gumtree. And coming soon, they've just launched a whole bunch of other stuff. So Messenger Room. So they're taking on Zoom at the moment and they are using the Messenger feature to now be able to Zoom and it'll be for free and up to 50 members and you'll be able to screen share. And virtual dating, this one was launched this morning, so I had to add this one in. Uh, then you're now going to be able to accept virtual dates in Messenger. So if you sign up for online dating and there's somebody that meets your eye, you'll be able to swipe right and you'll be able to uh, have a virtual date with them through Messenger. <laughs> so Facebook's got your back. <laughs> Uh, Brooklyn, do you have any comments or feedback? You're all good? Yeah, I'm all good. I'm loving it. As you're talking, I'm making some notes here of all the things I need to go and do. I want to update <laughs> you a fair bit. So thank you. And I was so surprised that the click-through rate is less than a percent. Thinking 
um, about how much money in the past I've spent on ads and I always thought I was doing them horribly. You know, either people have these nightmare stories or they're crushing it. And I was never the girl that crushed it. Um, I, I'm humbled by the fact that it's 0.9% um, because maybe it wasn't that bad after all. <laughs> um, I, do think, I, do, I do think a lot of the reason is, is because people think that Facebook advertising is the magic pull, it's the solution. However, if, you, if your strategy is not working for free on Facebook, chances are it doesn't matter how much money you throw at it, it's not going to work. Um, and Facebook ads can work. Um, and if you go down onto my blogs on my, on my website, there is a blog on nine reasons why your Facebook ads don't work. And I do have a webinar coming up in a couple of weeks. And it's talking about getting things in place. So most business owners don't have all the things in place that need to be in place in order for ads to work. Like you have to have email retargeting. You have to have like split testing. Like there's all these big ugly words and it's, 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 it's a complicated thing. It's not a, an easy little quick fix thing. So yes, it can work, but, um, but it's not easy. There's actually still quite a bit of work to go mm. into it. And I'm loving to hearing about um, like a Zoom feature in Messenger. I think with nearly all of us um, mostly working from home now, this is going to be, um, you know, amazing and so helpful if it's encrypted. Um, yes, they are. And that's the whole thing right now. They're looking for the, the privacy side of it. So, um, and that's why it hasn't been launched yet because they still getting that one right. I mean, think about the online dating one. That's, they're going to have to, <laughs> you know, there's got to be a lot of research that goes into that so they don't get wrapped over the knuckles for that one. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. I can't wait. Let's keep going. Sure. So I always start with the fundamentals and I just go, well, if you don't get these fundamentals right, um, and, you know, Brooklyn, I'd imagine as a coach, you'd probably go over a whole bunch of these with, with your clients um, as well. And firstly, it just is knowing who you are and how you want to be seen online. Um, you know, people know, like, and trust you, but do you want to have a public, a private, you know, how do you actually want to be seen online? And I think coming up with that first is, is one of the most important things. The second one is to know your ideal clients and intimately. Um, and people really struggle with this because they really think that they do. Um, and I think what happens is they forget how they used to feel before they had the solution themselves. So they know what they're doing now and they're so passionate about it and they see the results, but they actually forget about identifying with the person before the person actually worked with them, if that makes any sense. Um, and that's the, that's the person that we want to get to know, the person who is going to, you know, how they were feeling before you. And sometimes it, they're not wanting you or sometimes what they, they want and what they need are two different things. But we need to connect with them with what they think they want and then give them what they need. So it's important for us to really sit down and brain dump that one. Um, number three is stalking your competitors. And as I think we did mention this in one of our previous talks together, and I said stalking competitors through Facebook is one of the biggest learning curves that you can have because this way you could recognize what your point of difference is um, and how you can stand out on your Facebook page over your competitors. You can also relook at your offers, relook at your messaging, um, just to make sure that you're doing it better. So you're not copying, you're just making sure you're doing it better. Number four is a branding consistency. So, you know, like McDonald's is a big, massive M and everybody knows the big, massive M is McDonald's. But we're, we are just little old us <laughs> and there's quite a lot of us and, and they, you know, there's a lot of us and we're all kind of doing the same thing. So from a branding consistency perspective, there's two aspects I like to look at. And the one is the graphics. So making sure that your colors, your pictures, your fonts have all got the same feeling so that when you come up in front of them, if it's all different, they're not going to know that it's you every single time. So there does need to be consistency in that. But one of the other things that there needs to be consistency is, is in your key messaging. So the language that you're using. When you become known for, um, and there's consistency in the things that you keep saying, it will become memorable because people have to hear it again and again and again and again. Um, so yeah, key messaging and graphics, branding, consistency. Number five is a strategic plan. So a lot of people go, this is what I like to do and I'm just going to spit it all out, out over Facebook and I'm hoping to get clients. But 
unfortunately it doesn't work. And this is why I changed my name from a Facebook coach to a Facebook strategist, because what I realized is that without the strategy, it just won't work. So you have to go to the end and go, what am I hoping to achieve? What clients do I want? What time of day do I want them? Because that's going to make a difference to the type of people that you're going to target. So you've got to focus on that end. But how much do I want them to pay? Because that's going to determine what type of clients I attract. So we actually have to go to the end first and go, what am I hoping to achieve? And then go back from that and go, okay, well, how can I create an offer that's going to get, get those people to buy from me? How can I price it so that those people are happy to pay for it? How am I going to market to the people? How am I going to find them online? Where are they going to be? How am I going to present it to them? And we have to actually work from the end forward. And unfortunately, what happens is everybody just goes, I do this. And then they just go, I do this. And they just shove it out there. Um, but we have to start with the end. And the end is actually making money. And I find this a lot with service-based businesses. They just want to give, give, give um, because they love to doing what they do. But it has to result in an energy exchange um, because for it to be more more valuable to each of us there has to be an energy exchange so the next one is r and r so it's not rest and relaxation it's review and respond <laughs> so we don't just do these things we have to take our take our time to review what is working or what is not working and then make changes okay and then the other r is respond we have to go in and respond the conversation cannot just be me spitting stuff out on social media, I have to go in and I've got to respond to those people to build genuine relationships because no one is just going to pass you money without getting to know you first. They just not. I, I once had a coach who came to me and she said, I'm selling a $10,000 program. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to see anybody. I just want to put stuff out onto Facebook and get them to buy $10,000. And I said, it's not going to happen. Will not happen. You have to touch them multiple times in special places before you can get a yes. So the other R's are, um, you've got to know how to give and receive referrals or re online, as well as recommendations and how to maintain a good reputation. So these are also key fundamentals. And number seven is get them the hell of social media. So as much as Facebook is trying to keep everything inside Facebook, uh, we don't want to send them off our page because that slows down the algorithm and we don't want to use outside ones coming in. But what we do want to do is get them into a discovery call or get them into an opt-in or get them just get them into email us because we want to take them off Facebook because if Facebook does blow up, like for those random hours that have, that have just stopped working a couple of years back, we don't want to lose everything that we've worked so hard to get. So we want to make sure that if you have a Facebook group, you should have everybody's contact details inside that group because Facebook owns Facebook. And number eight is have a professional profile. Okay, so you know, always try and make sure that your images are kind of up to scratch, that if somebody went and stalked your personal profile and your business page, they would get a good sense of who you are, the type of person you are, um, and the value that you could add to them. Uh, we've all done a bit of stalking and when you go on someone's profile and they look dodgy, it's an immediate no. You're immediately going to be unfollowed or blocked um, and then you've lost it. And it literally it's a two, three second thing where they go, no, oh, this looks dodgy, suspect, done. Okay, and they will not choose you, they'll choose somebody else. It does work the other way around. I was on um, radio on Friday and they were talking to me about people who go on and put super professional images up with super, um, it's almost like their content's been written by copywriters where everything is very duck, 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 and it's so professional and it's not really friendly and the images are very, um, very, like very professional, whatever. Even that on, in itself can make people feel, ah, this is fake as well. So the, I actually believe that there's, uh, there's good and bad in both of that. Okay, so the poor little old algorithm. We'll talk about the poor algorithm because he gets, a, he gets a bad knock all the time, okay? But I love the algorithm because the algorithm is basically a prediction. So if you're inputting the right data into Facebook and if you're engaging and you're talking to and you're paying attention to the 
to the industry that you're in and the clients that you want, well, it matches you just like the just like plenty of fish, the dating site. It actually will match you and go, you like this, you like this, we'll put you together. So the algorithm works. You just got to set up your profiles correctly because that's inputting the right data. Engage in the right people, put in the right data, and it will match you to the people who are interested in the same thing. It's, it's very much like Google. It's, it's a search engine. And you do not need hashtags for it. You just need words. So it predicts or determines or chooses what goes on your news feed. Uh, it scans all the input and content on Facebook. It determines how interested you'd be in seeing that. It then predicts what you'd like best, and it then considers how you would respond to that content. Okay, so I say Facebook's the biggest stalker. So you need to consistently enter the right data into Facebook because it's that data that's going to connect you. So when they talk about, you know, like with SEO on Google and that, it's, it's a very similar thing. These are the words that other people are putting in. So if you're not using those words in your content, it's not going to match you. Now, here's the good news. If you're just talking about what it is that you do, you will attract the right people. Okay, so what does online success look like? Because this is kind of like... Um, when someone is unhealthy and you ask them how they are and they always feel good and then only when they actually get healthy do they go, oh, shit, I didn't realise that, you know, waking up with a sore back every single day, like, wasn't normal. I thought that was normal. So what does online success look like? You jump out of bed every day excited to serve your clients. You've got the knowledge. Uh, you have the knowledge to time effectively create content on Facebook. Time effectively, because time is important. You've got an easy to follow action plan. You get up, you just know what to do to get results. You only spend about 20 minutes online connecting with your perfect clients that come into your business. New, opp new opportunities are being created through Facebook, like speaking, events, podcasts, interviews, radio, TVs, collaborations. Your business has increased visibility and stands out from your competitors. You are happy, your clients are happy, and more clients and opportunities present themselves. You get paid your worth, you're in demand, and your business has the systems in place to run smoothly and to scale. So these are the three biggest myths that I've been dealing with at the moment. The right person will buy the right offer presented the right way online. Okay, and this is where the mistakes sometimes happen because they don't have the right person or the right, they have the right offer, but it's to the wrong person. Or they have the right person, but it's the wrong offer or they're not communicating it effectively online. So it's not being presented correctly online or you're trying to do everything on Facebook and you really, you're doing everything and it's all the wrong things or it's in the wrong order. You do not have to spend hours and hours online doing every single thing that you ever heard of to get clients online. You only need to spend 20 minutes a day. I've got three busy kids. I've got a busy partner. I love being outdoors. I love training. I love my dog. I love doing all these things. I'm an active person. I don't like being online. And you do not have to gamble your hard-earned money away on ads or outsourcing to get a client online. You, the business owner, the right person to manage your Facebook to get clients. You just really need to know how. Uh, if you have a look at my Facebook page today, I took a picture of a, a doctor advertising, doing paid advertising on Facebook. And he's talking about traveling all over the country, doing live events. And he is just being trashed online. And I took a screenshot. I didn't put his name in there, posted it, and I asked for feedback on it. And what we all think has happened is that he's paid someone else to do an ad. The ads team have taken one from last year, gone and put it up. So not only is he paying the person to do it, plus paying for the ad, he's having his reputation trashed online at the moment for not doing the right thing. And you know what? He probably doesn't even know. Because if he knew, because he's got hundreds of comments, he would have turned it off. The simple success looks like this. You've got a desirable offer that someone's prepared to pay for because it solves a problem 
which causes them distress or disease. You know who wants it and you know where they are on Facebook. You use or understand and use Facebook's capabilities along with the right key messaging for the right communication to effectively communicate with them what it is that you do so that you can get a yes from them. So how do you decide what you're going to, what offer you're going to create? So things to consider when creating an offer. So number one, I always start with you. What absolutely lights your fire? Absolutely lights your fire. You just, you, you get the most amount of happiness from it because chances are you're in your groove and that's what you're supposed to be doing. The so number two is, what do people already know, like, and trust about you? So people already see this thing inside of you. And I always get people to use descriptive words when we do this. Descriptive words. So, you know, energetic, passionate, enthusiastic, motivating, like whatever it is, whatever those people already know, like, and trust about you. Like if you're results orientated, if you are positive, if you're uplifting, it's important to know what those things are because people already know, like, and trust that about you. So it's easy for you. Now, what problem do they have that for you is so easy to solve? Like you look at it and you go, oh my gosh, I can solve that in two seconds. Like when I talk to someone, I go, right, tell me this. What do you do? Cool. I've already got a Facebook strategy in my head. I know how you can make money. Like it's simple. Just comes to me. So for you, what is that thing? Now, this is what happens is people complicate it and they have a thousand choices, but a confused mind buys nothing. Take one offer, make it super desirable and go with that. Now, people always want to do upsells and downsells and it's too, it's too complicated. And you know what? What I find is the business owner starts to not trust their offer and go, oh, okay, you can have this one if you like, or, or maybe this one over here, and people can sense it. It's like you've got no confidence in it. But if you go, I've got one offer, this thing will solve your problem. I've created the de most desirable thing for you. And focus on getting that one offer out there, one offer. Now, who are those people who would pay you for that? And that comes back to that whole, having a look at the customer, who they are, where they are, uh, and so that they would value that. And remember, it says here, who will pay you for that? <laughs> they will pay you for it. There is no point in going and selling dog toys to somebody who's allergic to animals. Okay? And number five is, you then have to make it, and all these words are important. One, it's got to be valuable. Two, it has to be desirable. Three, it's got to be irresistible. Four, it has to be customer focused. And five, it has to be outcome focused. So people just want to know what's in it for them. When they do this thing, how is the end of that going to look? And this is where we often go wrong because we start to use all our big fancy words and we start to try and take everyone through our processes when we are on Facebook. No one is interested in that. They just want to know what's in it for them. What's the solution at the end? They don't want to know that you're going to take them through this program and you're going to go here and you're going to do this and that and we're going to have one hour, three hours and then two hours here and five hours and then you get a workbook and a, a video and a, they're going, what the shit like? That's just hard work. No way. If you just say at the end of this, you will feel no pain. You will just go, you'll be able to play with the kids. You'll be able to kick a ball, you'll be able to go hiking up a hill. They just want to know what the outcome is. They don't want to know the process or what you're going to do to them. In fact, what you're going to do to them is scary and it's challenging and it's the biggest way to get a fat no. And personal trainers are the best ones for this. They come in and they go, we'll give you a free PT session. Come in, we'll give you a PT session person sits down and they go, right, we're going to make you do, um, before they even get them to sign up, 
we're going to take away your food. We're going to make you drink three liters of water. We're going to do a thousand burpees. You're going to leave here a hot, sweaty mess. You're going to be sore for the first two weeks. And what happens? No one comes back. Like no one wants to know what you're going to do to them. <laughs> Don't tell them. <laughs> Don't tell them about all the hard work. Yes, there's going to be a bit of hard work. Get a yes first. Then you can explain that to them. But this is what we do for accelerated success. So we spoke about this earlier, stalking your competitors. But you also want to have a look at your previous clients. Consider how they felt before you work with them and ask them because they will remember and they will tell you. And often it's hard for us to remember how they were feeling. How were they feeling before they started? How do they feel after they finished with you? And then prospective clients, we need to stalk them as well. Are they feeling the same way? Can your desirable offer give them the same solution? And of course, if your competitors, is what you're offering more effectively communicated than how they doing it? So if you're an accountant and you're doing tax returns, you don't go, I'm an accountant, I'm doing tax returns because every accountant's doing the same thing. How are you going to effectively communicate? Why you over someone else? So number two is uh, brain dumping your income opportunities. And again, this is a, comes back to that strategy side of it. The very end, the very end is money. How are you going to get that money working backwards? And then monetize your desirable offer. Now, believe it or not, pricing is just a guess up amount. Okay, who, who determines how much something is? Who determines how much this phone is? They at some point came up with, it cost me this much, this is my profit, that's how much it is. But really, pricing is just made up. Now, if you go too low, no one will respect your offer and they will not respect you. If you go too high, that's okay, but you have to deliver. You have to deliver. So when you're monetizing your desirable offer, make sure that you throw in everything that you can that is going to offer someone the solution. And the last one is go forth and get them. So go, you take your strategy and you go and get paying clients by effectively communicating what it is that you do to the right person with the right offer. So here's some content. So compelling content that converts. So if you play and you just put the little mimis on there all the time, or if it's just selfies all the time, uh, or if it's just your dog all the time, you're not ever going to get a yes because sometimes people don't even know what it is that you do. They go on their page and they go, what is it that you do? Are you a pet groomer? Because all I see is your dog. They don't know. So here's some of the content that you can create, use so that it is, um, so that you will get a yes from them. So number one is about you, your family, your partner, your why, a little bit of an insight as to you, the person, because here's what happens. We might have started our business page three years ago. Since then, we've been getting more and more people to like our page. Um, well, they weren't there three years ago when you introduced yourself and you spoke about who, who you are and what you do. So there does need to be you on your page. And this is where a lot of people go wrong is that they leave themselves out of their business page. They want to look too formal. But a relationship is not built by that. If you went onto Tinder and there was a picture of a sky and there wasn't a picture of a person and the person just wrote a little bit about themselves like I'm looking to date someone, you would scroll right over them. They want to see your face, they want to see your eyes, they want to hear a little bit about you so that they can build a deeper and meaningful relationship, especially if you are the one who is actually providing the service because they have to feel trust. 
Number two is your why. So what is your backstory? How did you become what it is that you do? Now, this is important because, um, and I'll use an example of one of the ladies that I work with. She's a coach for um, mums. And she goes in and she helps mums so that they can be less angry and don't scream at their kids so much. Um, and you can think about a mother who's probably suffering from a little bit of guilt for, for doing that sort of thing. And you think, okay, she's going, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and now I'm such a great mother. It's important for you to talk about when you weren't. So they understand that you're compassionate. So they understand that you're human. So that they understand that it's a judgment-free space. You, if you said it's a judgment-free space, that's one thing, but you want to make sure that they can feel that as well. You know, I was once like that. I did this, I did this, I did this, but the solution worked for me. Number three, again, is your services or your desirable offer. And as I said, if they keep seeing the same desirable offer, they will choose it. They will choose it. I have upsells and I've got downsells, but they are far away. No one ever sees them. They're only something that I have after I've worked with someone to see whether or not that desirable offer isn't suitable for them. And guess what? Because it's a desirable offer, it is suitable. Number four is credibility. So we want to see your expertise. So that's your qualification, your years experience, um, tips, statistics, in information. It makes you look smart. Now, social proof over here, Brooklyn spoke to me a little bit about this one here, saying that, um, you know, the essence of this is that people don't just want you talking about yourself. So it is good for, even if it's another, for you guys, it might be a nice idea to social proof would be collaborating with another professional in, the, in a similar industry where you're not in competition with each other, that they would give you each social proof. Number six is pleasure, pain, or humor, okay? And it really should relate to your audience. It does get engagement up, but what it does is it shows your potential prospective clients that you understand them. That's what it does. So, for example, if it's Friday and there's a lady doing yoga and she's got a massive wine glass balancing and she's going, it's Friday doing yoga, um, you know, it means I get you. It's like, I get you. You're also hanging for your wine on a Friday afternoon. So if it's going to be humorous, it just shows that you understand your ideal client. Remembering that there needs to be a balance between all of these. It can't just always be humor, humorous. Number seven is community. So community involvement is really important. So if you belong to any sort of organizations or special things, like if you're a volunteer fireman or if you foster dogs, or it's important to put that aspect in because like attracts like. And people love to see people with a sense of community. So even if you're helping out at school, even if you're fundraising for something, people go, oh, I'm not sharing that on my business page. However, that gives you so much um, credibility. So number eight is involving your audience in the marketing. So asking them, you know, I'm, coming, I'm writing a blog at the moment. Would you prefer me to write a blog on this or a blog on that? What is everyone struggling with right now? So it's involving your audience and trying to get a response out of them. It's a great way to evoke curiosity and to get them to engage or to give a response. But it's also a great way to get feedback as well as from what your uh, potential clients are interested in. Makes them feel important. Number nine is obviously your offers your specials, if you've got referral programs or even any competitions that you may have. And number 10 is trending and seasonal. So if Father's Day is coming up, you don't want to make sure that uh, the night before, um, actually everyone's doing this with Mother's Day at the moment, they're doing Mother's Day promotions and the cutoff for the postage is already yesterday and they're still doing Mother's Day promotions now. Now they're going to have to do Mother's Day promotions saying that you'd have to pick up where you are. So pick up on the Gold Coast, where, where's I am. Uh, my clients are Maryborough, pick up in, in Maryborough. Like they're not going to be able to post it out. Postage is already closed. It's important that, we are, that we're up to date with what is trending, what is seasonal, and make sure that we haven't left things too late. Um, I use one of these, they're from Kmart. 
Um, it is a, it's just a, a tear sheet, which I love, it's just a tear sheet here. Uh, and you can basically plan five weeks ahead so that you don't get caught. And this last one over here is pitching. So on Facebook, there are people asking for services or they're asking for help. It's important for us to have a few copy paste little messages that you can use. And I use notes on my phone because it syncs to my computer. And I literally, if somebody says, hey, I'm looking for some help with Facebook, I can go, hey, I'm Chantel, this is what I do. Uh, click here if you'd like to book a call. So pitching is exceptionally imp important. You wanna make sure that you have those pitches ready on your phone. I can say I have over probably 100 on my phone. And I just copy paste the response there. Remembering that if you are offering them some advice or some tips, also offer them to book a call or to email you or to go onto your Facebook page. Remember, we wanna try and get them off Facebook. If we leave them on Facebook, they will, they will go and find you again. It's too hard. They'll go, where was that message? Where was that person? Oh, I don't know. So this is just a little bit about your reviews or insights. I'm not sure if anyone's seen this, but on your page, you can go to insights and you can have a look at either seven days or 28 days, or you can actually set it for shorter or longer. You can have a look at how your posts are working, uh, what's happening with the people on your page and also actions on your page. This over here is a kinesiologist's results, uh, which I printed. And over here, you can see, you can see clicks to her website uh, and then clicks to her action button. She hasn't got any phone number clicks because she doesn't take phone calls. What she does is she takes bookings of phone calls, the discovery call. And that's why the action button clicks are so important. So I do encourage everyone to go and, and check that they are monitoring their results and analyzing as to what's working or not working. You can then also have a look at your post to see which days are working better than others. Oh, Brooklyn's disappeared, hopefully she comes in. Um, as well as, let's have a look here. Uh, post days, times, and which ones are performing well. Just remembering that Facebook can only Facebook can only uh, give you results uh, or review what it is that you're doing. So if you post at the same time all the time, it's only ever gonna show you the same time. You can also have pages to watch. So if you wanna stalk your competitors, they don't know that you're doing it. Um, and then over here, we've got, uh, that's what I was talking about earlier, the last seven days or the last 28 days or even yesterday or today. And you can see how your page is performing. And people, this one's super important to see if your fans, your followers, the people being reached or people engaged are your demographic and are in the right location. So it is important to have a look at those. Let's just take a look here. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. Cool. All right. So, um, yeah, welcome back. Okay. So how do leads actually happen on Facebook? And I think I've got three examples here. So number one is on your personal profile, your business page or in a group, um, there's always etiquette and there's always rules, but you post content, compelling content, all those lovely things that I gave you examples for. People will like, they will share, they will comment or they will inquire. And guess what? You will respond and then you will get them off Facebook using a call to action. It does need to be ethically. So when I say ethically, it means that that person actually wants to be on your database. So we're not spamming um, and we're not trying to just get the wrong person on there, but someone is genuinely interested in what it is that you're offering, which they will be because you have, you have a desirable offer, which is desirable. You've gone and found the right people on Facebook and put your offer in front of them. You posted compelling com content to get trust, and now you're offering them an opportunity to work together. So it's a, it is a yes. If it's the right person, it's an easy yes, and it is ethical. And of course, you have to follow up. So number two is um, you comment and you engage in relevant groups. So you go into relevant groups, you have your ideal client, and you're not in competition with the person that's in there. And you might see somebody that says, hey, I'm looking for some help with Facebook. I've got no, Rick, uh, I've got no marketing budget. 
Does anyone have recommendations? And someone may tag you. So for example, someone who's used my services might go action tell Gerardi. Now I don't just look at it and go, thanks Lizzie, all right? You actually have to pitch back. So this is where I'd come in, I'd actually thank Lizzie first, then I'd say, I'm Chantal Girardi and I tag my name again. I empower business owners, have a look and see how I've helped other people. Would you like to book a call and have a chat? Okay, and that's how that one happens. Now the cool thing about this is that the person who actually asks the question may not use your services, but when people are scrolling through groups, they will see your pitch and go, hey, that's good. Let me click on there and see what that person does. Actually, I need help with that. I'll book a call. And the third way that leads happens is through collaboration. So kind of like what Brooklyn and I are doing at the moment, um, how I'm now in front of her audience by so doing collaborations. So joint ventures, lives, interviews, or guest posting, you've got the same audience, but you're not in competition with each other. The call to action is vital. Okay, so the call to action is at the end. And that is, they want to know then where do they go? What is the next step that they have to do? And unfortunately, that's where everybody leaves it. They don't put the call to action there. So people go, that was great information, but now what? And again, I use personal trainers again. They're doing it at the moment. All of them are doing free workouts every day on their Facebook page. They're doing lives. Well, why should anybody have to pay for them? Not once have they said, hey, would you like a PT? Would you like to be accountable with your food? Would you like to find out how we can work one-on-one? -on -one? Maybe this time doesn't suit you. Let's work at a more suitable time. Um, and this is why they're not making any money right now because they don't actually have an offer. And I see it and it makes me crawl, but they don't have an offer and they're not, they're doing all this stuff. They're giving lots of value, but they're not actually saying, hold on, but I can help you with this. Let's work together. They have no strategy, they have no intention. All right, cool. So for those of you who just wanna uh, jump on, stalk me a little bit further, you can like Chantel Girardi Facebook Strategist. I would encourage you to subscribe on my website, which is chantelgirardi.com.au, uh, because all our blogs and training get released weekly. Let's have a look. Stop sharing there. So if anybody is actually watching, once this gets posted, please feel free to leave your comments below. Uh, and just remember to tag me. So at Chantel Girardi, so I get the notification and ask the questions and I'd be more than happy to answer them for you on Facebook. Thank you so much. This has been so helpful. I've taken so many notes. Um, can I ask you a question? Please. Okay, um, a lot of us are taking our businesses online and there's some people who are, well, um, looking at perhaps remaining online and maybe not going back to the face-to-face -face. and I'm one of those people. And I remember that um, in the beginning of your presentation today, you were talking about on the personal profile, location is really important for the algorithm. So for people who are going to be running their businesses entirely online, is it important for us to put maybe, um, I mean, do we put online as the location or do we put like our capital city or do we put the suburb where you're living? Like what's your recommendation for that? The best way to handle that one is I think that the content, when you're posting anywhere, anyway and you're saying this is online, this is online, this is live, this is online, please register for this online event, that's going to take care of that. My mm -hmm. suggestion would be to make sure that it's on your banner. So Facebook banner. So um, the Facebook banner on your page is super important because that within three seconds of getting to your page, people know what it is that you do and yeah. they know how, how, how you can help them. So that is an incredible, um, incredibly underutilized piece of um, infrastructure that people just don't use. So if you are online worldwide, say online worldwide, yeah register now like um, yeah so that, that that would be the best place to do it um if i can share with you what's really working right now uh with this the online service-based industry at the moment mm -hmm. is webinars so for example we've been doing a sales webinar meaning yeah. that we point people to a webinar or free training over an over a month over four weeks 
we go in, we add value, we find the right people. We, we obviously have the right title for the webinar. We've got the, the right problem we're solving. Get them all into that webinar, present that webinar live. So we've been having anything from 20 to 60, and this is organic without, without paying for anything. Yeah. Get them into the webinar. We get the email address, which means they're now on our database. We can also now offer them a one-to-one -one call, or we could also then sell them into one of our programs. Um, but what we do is we set that webinar up and from that webinar, they make an offer at the end. So at the end, they will value stack their desirable offer, value stack it, uh, show the value, the value of so like this and this and this and this and the problem it solves. And there is a, there is, it is templated. There is a way to go through that to make sure that you get a yes at the end. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, they, they pitch, they say what the offer is. And you might have, say, 50 on the webinar, 25 will show up live. Uh, out of the 20, 25 that show up live, people have been selling anything from $2,000 to $8,000 worth of programs at the end of that webinar mm -hmm. from doing one webinar and spending 20 minutes every day just pointing people to that webinar. Yeah. Um, so, so that has been working quite well for us, but there has to be a match everywhere and the match is the content pointing them to it making sure you're in front of the right person making sure the webinar title is correct making sure the webinar content is valuable and you get a yes through the whole way you've got to get a yes through and at the end they buy gotcha so again it's that message of consistency being key yeah and well you've just got to come up with what is your strategy like as i said right now that webinar strategy is working well for myself I've got a relationship coach. I've got a, um, a mother's life coach. I've got a mother's business coach. And that strategy seems to be working quite well at the moment um, for, for them. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, my, as you saw, my Wi-Fi kept dropping out. Um, <laughs> so um, can you give everybody your contact details? I will also post them in the um, group so that people can connect with you. Um, and yeah, that would be amazing because I think everything that you've spoken about, it was just so much content here and I can't wait to look back over notes and everything and go and update. <laughs> Got a lot of updating to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's really good. I'll just put my uh, email address up there, my name. Uh, yeah, look, at the end of the day, like I spoke to the lady the other day and she had like three Facebook groups and she had like four pages and I was like, but how do you make your money? Like I kept asking, how do you make your money? Oh no, but people are adding value and I'm posting in here and everybody's sharing the engagements through the roof and I'm like, but how do you make money? Yeah. I must have asked about five times and she goes, I don't understand the question. I said, well, how do you make your money? Yeah. And at the end she went, I don't. I I don't. And I went, it's because you don't have a strategy. It doesn't matter how many groups you got. It doesn't matter how many challenges, you know, all these people doing 30 day Facebook challenges. Mm. So what, like, yeah. how are you going to make your money at the end of the 30 days? Yeah. You know, yeah. what next? And 30 days yeah. is a long time to have a challenge and to keep people interested and to keep getting a yes. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So it's just, it's making sure that, you know, that you get the right strategy for your business and that you carry on tweaking it until it works. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My absolute pleasure. As soon as the recording comes through, I'll send it through to you. Perfect. I really appreciate it, Chantel. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye.